Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while since I brought you an updated video on our little truck. I've been chipping away at it and a couple other things. I want to show you the meat and taters of what I've been doing. Got some good progress and I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. Let's get into it right now. Here's a couple of things I did behind the scenes while I wasn't filming as I went ahead and fixed all the rust on the front of this truck. And as you can see, it was pretty sizable chunks. It was, I was surprised how bad it was. Whoever owned this truck in Japan decided just to shove a bunch of body filler in the rust and then put this slick little red paint job on it and send it to me in America. It, it looked like it had some work done, but I had no idea how bad it was gonna be, but it's all been fixed now. There was a couple other spots that were rusty and they've all been patched as well. I went ahead and cut out some spots for these cool little JDM style yellow fog lights. I was able to piece together an 89 Civic EF front lip that I bought new off of eBay, ABS plastic, and cut it into four equal sized portions. And if you cut and measure it right, it's pretty slick how all all the body lines still line up. I still got some filling and sanding to do, but I think it looks cool. The weight plate's on, and with doing this, there was a little bit of that radiator that poked out of the bottom, and you can't see it anymore, and it all looks pretty tough and like it belongs there. One last look at the motor in the truck before I have to pull it out again. A couple of things to note if you're planning on tackling this swap is, I don't really think it matters what style header or turbo manifold that you try to put in this little truck. I hope someone can prove me wrong, but I don't think a stock one or manufactured one exists that's going to fit in these tight spaces. So something that you're going to have to consider or overcoming if you're going to do this swap is you're going to have to make a custom turbo manifold, custom header, whatever it is. It's just, it's that tight. There's a support bar that runs all the way across the back of this truck that that motor is very close to. So you got to make that turn extremely quickly if you want to clear, especially with the motor torquing. Something else to keep in mind is that the, um, the K20 swap harnesses plug and play that you can just purchase about anywhere. They're drastically shorter than you need them to be. I mean, dude, it stops like right here in the bed. So I've measured it out to about 36 inches that you have to add to these harnesses to get them in the truck to keep the ECU safe from moisture and damage because you can't just leave something like this in the bottom of the truck. You could get a very, very expensive custom harness made, but I don't even want to know what that cost. I have plenty of extra wire, so I will be extending it out myself. But these are just some things to consider before case swapping your truck. Just wanted to take a moment to appreciate the fact that the Acti truck has the motor in, the suspension is complete, and she is a roller. It's pretty sweet, man. Really. The front end's looking sick. I'm feeling pretty confident with everything that's been done to the back. Finally take a... Oh, a deep breath. The, uh, not that the struggle is over, but that was a big struggle. So we got that taken care of. Got to get the engine out, get it refreshed. Got to switch gears a little bit. I need to get my wife, Sylvia, back together. She's been really patient with me and I got her engine on the stand. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But when you have multiple projects going on, sometimes you just got to bounce around. You got to stay loose. You got to stay limber. And I am going to start doing a little bit more of that with the channel. I've done plenty of car stuff around here that I should have filmed and didn't. I think you guys would enjoy watching it. So we're going to start doing that as well. But let's take one last look at the little truck while she's all together, rust free, case swapped, three linked, full body coilover. Yeah, man. Yeah. To anybody that was curious, this has been one of my side quests that I've been working on here and there. This is my wife's Nissan Silvia. What started off as a misfire and I was just trying to figure out what was going on with it. Kind of just snowball effect and ended up Converting over to a top mount turbo and got the engine out to do a little work on it and then found some rust in the engine bay. So ended up painting the entire freaking engine bay and it got carried away, but very close to having this put back together. I'm waiting on a couple more parts to come in for the motor, get it all put back together and then get this bad boy up and running again and finally get my lift cleared. So due to the overall tight fit of the swap, this thing's got to come out in pieces. I'd imagine that in the future I could leave the intake manifold on, but it's barely bolted on right now but I definitely I have to separate the engine and the transmission to be able to pull it out from the top with the way that I've gone about bracing the front and the way that the suspension runs in the rear I can no longer come in and out from the bottom I could but I'd have to completely unbolt the entire suspension and I'm going to avoid that to the best of my abilities
K24 is out of the truck. I don't have a free engine stand right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and break this thing down to the ground, get the head off and get it to the machine shop tomorrow so I can go ahead and get it cleaned up, refreshed, and I wanna get it back in the truck as quickly as possible so I can get to wiring this thing up and hopefully get it turned over at a uh, you know a decent rate. All right, we're making a little headway on getting the head off. <laughs> See, we got the lost motion assembly out and we got the cams out. Getting ready to pull the spark plugs and then start working on breaking the head studs loose and then see what kind of mess we actually have in between the top and the bottom. All right, got them all loose. And here we go. Ooh, that looks rough. Here are our major motor pieces. Um, this is the original head that we're not going to be using. This is the new guy. It's more, it's a, it, it'll perform better across the board. So that's the new head. This is the original block. Everything's been to the machine shop. It's been cleaned, it's been bored, it's been decked, and it is ready to be put back together. I got a couple of goodies to put inside this setup that I'm gonna show you now. Look at the head package that I'm gonna be running in the K24. We got Feria intake and exhaust valves, SuperTech dual valve springs and ARP head studs. As far as the bottom end goes, we're gonna be doing a very basic refresh using these King Racing bearings and going to the TSX style piston. It's a little bit better than the uh, piston that was in the bottom end, but we'll still be using those factory connecting rods and the crankshaft. So something I've been going back and forth with a lot, like back and forth and back and forth is engine management on the little truck. Do I wanna keep it basic or do I really wanna go for it? The truck does not have a tachometer in it. There's just really nothing. It's not like you're swapping or turboing something that was intended to ever be performance-based. The truck has no tack in it. There's nothing in there. It's very bare bones. So I didn't really know exactly what I was going to end up doing as far as engine management went. I talked to my tuner, which is always the go-to. What does your tuner want to run? So after going back and forth with him for a little while, we finally settled on Haltech engine management. I'm really excited about that. I love their stuff. Stuff. and we also went with the digital dash display and I'm gonna show you guys that now. So here's what I've decided to go with. This actually, the Elite 1500, is going to be going in the Sylvia. I, I went with the 550 for the truck, but it's on back order. And just for filming sake, I wanted something to show you guys, but we're not running this 1500 in the K truck. That's going in the Sylvia. We're doing the Elite 550, which is a very solid unit and it has plenty of input outputs to run everything that we need in the little truck. This is my personal favorite piece of equipment that we're gonna be running in the truck. I've wanted one of these for a long time. And considering that the little truck didn't have a tack in it, there's just really not much to work with this is going to show us everything going on with the swap and I'll be able to data log from that it has very cool heads up digital display you can change it around super customizable but this is going to be the combo that we're gonna be running for the little truck and I'm really excited all right well that's going to do it for this episode we've got the motor pulled out we got parts to go inside of the motor we got engine management covered we got side quests going on i got add car guy stuff everywhere but we have progress getting the motor built going to get that back Immediate focus is to get the motor in and get it running. So future episodes gonna be wiring, fuel delivery, things of that nature. But where my head is at is this truck has to run and go down the road before I even put the glass back in, before I worry about body work, I have to see this thing run. I think that you guys wanna see this thing run. I'm gonna get some footage of the side quest over here, getting that motor stabbed back in there. But I appreciate you guys tuning in, watching, being patient with me. Uh, things like this, they don't happen overnight. I had a couple of you guys reach out. You're like, dude, did you give up? Are you still at it? I did not give up. I am still at it. I will not give up. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting and all the kind words from the community. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you on the next one.